Hi. Now, if you'd like to have a go at this question, haven't done so already, just give you a moment to pause the video. When you come back, either fast forward just to check out the working, or I'll take you slowly through the work solution. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. So for this one, we'll just copy down the fraction. We've got to express x minus 7 then times x minus 2, all divided by x plus 2 times x minus 1, all squared in partial fractions. So what I'd do is say that this is identical to and first of all, we've got our first linear factor in the denominator here, x plus 2. So that's going to give rise to the partial fraction, a constant. Let's say it's a divided by x plus 2. And then we've got this repeated linear factor. So partial fractions for this are going to be another constant. We'll call it b over x minus 1. And then another fraction with a constant c, say, over all of x minus 1 squared. Next, I would want to multiply both sides by the denominator here, x plus 2 times x minus 1 all squared. And if we do that, it's just going to leave us with x minus 7 times x minus 2 on the left hand side. And then this is going to be identical to, now if we multiply this fraction with that denominator, the x plus 2's will cancel, just leaving me with a times x minus 1, all squared. And then for this fraction here, we're just going to get b multiplied by x plus 2 and just one of the x minus 1's. So we'll have x plus 2 times x minus 1. And for the last fraction, multiply that by x plus 2 times x minus 1 all squared. The x minus 1's will all uh, cancel out. So you're just going to get c times x plus 2. Now we need to work out what the constants a, b and c are. And the way I'm going to do it is to let x equal 1. That will make this bracket 0, so it will take out that term. And this bracket here will be 0, so it will take out all of that term, which will save us having to do simultaneous equations. So we'll just say when x equals 1, then on the left-hand side here, I'm going to have 1 minus 7, so that's going to be minus 6. And that's going to be multiplied with 1 minus 2, which is minus 1. And it's going to be equal now. And then we said this term will go out because that's going to be 0. This term will go out because this is 0. But here we'll have 1 plus 2, which is 3. So we're going to have 3c. So we've got 6 here equals 3c. Divide both sides by 3 and you end up with c equaling 2. So that's one constant. Now if we set x to be equal to minus 2, that's going to take out this term here, because that bracket there will be 0, and this bracket here will be 0, so it will take out that term and just leave us with this term. So if we just say here when x equals minus 2, then we've got minus 2 minus 7, so that's minus 9. And that's multiplied with minus 2 minus another 2, that's minus 4. And that's going to equal minus 2 minus 1, so that's minus 3. Square that and you're going to get 9. So you're going to have this equaling 9a. These terms then are going to be both 0. So we've got 36 here equals 9a. Divide by 9 and you end up with a equaling 36 divided by 9, which is 4. Now we've got the last constant to work out, which is b. And what you could do here is substitute any value for x that you like into here. That's one way of doing it. Maybe x equals 0. Up to you. I'm going to compare coefficients of x squared. I think it's going to be a lot quicker. But do uh, experiment, all right? So compare coefficients. We'll just write this in here. Coefficients okay, of x squared. 
And if we do that, we've got here x times x here is just going to give us x squared, 1x squared. So on the left, we're just going to get 1 there equals. And for this term, if we square this bracket out, we're just going to get x squared. There'll be minus 2x plus 1, but don't need to worry about that. Just x squared. So you'll have a times x squared. So the coefficient of x squared there will be a. For this term here, we can see we're going to get x times x is x squared. So you'll have bx squared. So the coefficient of x squared there is going to be b. Now if I rearrange this, subtract a from both sides, because we know a, then b is equal to 1 minus a. But we know that a is 4. So that means that it follows that b must be equal to 1 minus 4, which is going to be minus 3. So we've got our constants now. So therefore, just to recap, we'll write out our fraction again, x minus 7 times x minus 2, all divided by x plus 2 times x minus 1 squared. This is going to be identical to a. a is 4, so we've got 4 over x plus 2. Don't rush in and write a plus now until you've checked out what b is. b is a minus 3, so we can just put minus 3 here divided by x minus 1. And again, just check what c is. c is a plus value, so that's going to be plus 2 divided by all of x minus 1 squared. And there you go, expressed in partial fractions.